somewhere I saw some artists coming from this place and doing other things now and and I'm really pleased to think uh, yeah this was the, the reliance effect I had some day crying I had some day really screaming I had some day suffering and I had some day like Man, it was absolutely beautiful. It's it's beautiful. It's a it's a beautiful experience. I wish everybody can do that. I mean, uh, if you have any, if you have any any feeling of enterprise or everything, please do something like that. Don't do the same. Do it differently. Do whatever you want, but do something else. It's the greatest adventure. It's a, it's a human adventure. Can't be more interesting than that. My name is Bertrand Perenes. I'm French. I came in Cork uh, in in 2000. Um, I'm working uh, in the art scene in Cork since 2005. Uh, I'm, I consider myself as a sculptor. I was more and more concerned about uh, the place to work in Cork, about producing art, uh, doing exhibition. Uh, then in, in the quest of finding a, a place for myself, and I call that a quest because it's really hard to find space, um, I found I had this opportunity to have this beautiful, massive, huge space. Uh, it's good for me, but I think it was also good for other people. I think uh, lots of people can enjoy uh, this kind of situation. I moved in the factory in June, let's say, at the beginning of the summer. The people came, start to come inside the building in July, let's say, July and August. Then that gave us maximum three months work. For most of the people, they come the last month. And we talk about people have been working in this project for two, three weeks sometimes. Then very, very short time. A very short time is very, very difficult to achieve something. Uh, that's very important to know. My name is Neve Leonard and I'm from Mayo and I live in Cork for years. It was my idea walking in the park one day. I wanted, originally it was going to be a sphere. So you'd walk into this kind of bubble that would be painted, but that would just be too complicated. So it turned in, my head turned around into a box, which is much simpler. And uh, just had the idea of a walk-in painting, where people would get the experience of painting by being inside it instead of viewing it. And I think it worked. My name is Michaela Heyer and I'm from Germany. I do acrobatics and I do a bit of aerial. Um, for the acrobatics I work with Zali. Um, we just do kind of um, East African style acrobatics. We perform, we would train quite regularly a week and then with the aerial I work with two other girls. So that space it was just amazing. It was really big, it was great for the aerial, it was great for the acro and it was just available every day. It was brilliant and it was nice to kind of collaborate as well with the other artists. It was a nice vibe to it, you know, you came in and there was somebody there and you had a coffee and it's really nice. I think um, we can create what, what I would call myself kind of a, a melting pot where everybody can find inspiration through different medium, can also be in touch with also different medium. That's helped me, for example, for my personal work, that's helped me very much to enlarge my vision, to enlarge my sensitivity by uh, uh, getting, coming aware of the, the sensitivity of different artists who have a different vision. My name is Morgan Keevney and I'm from Galway. For the last three years, I was in the Crawford School of Art finished my ordinary diploma or degree and just left that. I went looking for a space, Bertrand had a space, and just took that then for the six weeks that I was there. And using the building itself, I just by casting the surfaces of the floors and kind of different things like that, I was just using that again as another way of drawing. I think for ideas, like there was a massive amount of space to think, so you could you could actually think of like doing things that were really big or you th think of doing things that were small, like so. It gave you that room to kind of breathe or to move around in.
I mean, everybody should really uh, jump on the occasion to try to work a bit deeper inside ourselves, researching. Uh, we are not at school anymore. School have these good things. It's the moment we study. I think the life, it, it's a constant study. Every day we have to learn something. We have to go back to sleep every day with the new things I've learned today. This is really important. That's how we go for evolution. My name's Robert Iverson, and originally I'm from uh, the West Midlands in England. I work a lot with um, found objects, and uh, I usually do a bit of blacksmithing as well, and kind of mix kind of um, found objects and like organic shapes. I'm Chris um, Kovlevich. I mean, I, I, I went in there thinking, you know, if I, if I get a space that's got a lot of light or if I get a space that's dark and I can control the light, that will sort of have a big influence on what I end up doing in the space. And kind of, I, I wanted to use like, what materials and bits and bobs I could find that were already in the building. It was an old uh, ball bearings factory, so I was finding old bits and pieces. It was all cast concrete, really hard sort of cast concrete, so you get unique kind of acoustics in the space as well. Abby and I'm from Winchester in England. I literally walked in and there was a big space where I was able to do whatever I wanted, it felt like. And I wouldn't usually have the opportunity to use a space to make a, anything to show, really. It, in the end there, we only actually spent like two, two and a bit days working on that to get it set up, just sort of round the clock sort of thing. And we were, yeah, we got thinking to if we had a bit if we had a bit more time and some more resources to put into it, you know, we could have taken it a lot further, actually. Yeah, we made a, it's kind of like a, a marble run for the ball bearings to go all the way around the space that we were working in. We used all things that we'd found in the space, like the ball bearings and uh, the pipes and stuff. We wanted to make a sound sculpture. We wanted to kind of recreate uh, some of the feeling of the sounds that might have been in the factory when it was working, I think. I mean, it, it's very important. We are in the rich world. Uh, we have everything we want, and there is, I don't understand how there is so many people unhappy with their life. I mean, there's a lot of things we can do just by pleasing ourselves, by creating, by doing something, painting, dancing, whatever you want to do, this is possible. And that's the only way to feel well at the moment in this life. Rosie O'Regan is my name, and I'm from Cork. So there's Inma in Mamoya, and she's from Spain. Her background is in dance. Um, Christina is also Spanish, and um, she studied uh, performance art. And then there's Susanna, but it kind of moves around for people who get involved. But that's the kind of nature of it, I suppose. It's collaboration and experimental. You know, it, there was a real feeling of potential there, I think. You know, even for interaction with all the other people that were working there, that was happening, you know, there was a bit of crossover, and that's exciting. My name is Owen O'Connell, and I spent three months working in the studios of the Reliance Building. These are a few images from a project I'm working on, looking at the relationship between people and the Irish landscape and the changes in the landscape in recent years. A lot of my photographs are shot at dusk as the light is changing from light to dark. My name is Robert Collins. And I'm from Dublin originally. I, I went down there one day and I had a look around and immediately ran up to Bertrand and said, give me a space. So what I was doing in the Reliance company was gathering all the old computers from the offices, installing Linux on them, and basically creating a um, computer farm 
It's kind of like a, a supercomputer where all the computers share their resources. It's like the Iranians did it about 10 years ago. They bought thousands of um, PlayStations. They weren't allowed to um, import really high-end computers because they were considered military hardware. So they just bought thousands of PlayStations from Japan and stacked them all up in a room and kept them together. It's missile guidance systems. <laughs> just being able to go somewhere else and having a specific place basically for what you were going to do and there's nothing else there was brilliant because I was just you know it's 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 rare you get that feeling of zoning in on something and just wanting to stay there for hours and hours just plugging away. I've worked with you know technology communes and art collectives and stuff of like that and they they break my heart completely because this it's like you've got a whole bunch of bosses and you have to have a series of meetings and everyone has to, do, to agree and if people don't agree there's this tension that occurs and it gets political and stress like that whereas uh, you know Bertrand is just a ball of energy and heading off and you know doing the things and um, and he talks to people about it as well which is good. It's not possible in three months, six months, even a year to say okay we succeed on this or that. There is no... Uh, and I, I don't think there is any such a thing as succeeding on something, actually. It's, it's about... I'm more concerned about the experience. I'm more concerned about the process. I'm not really concerned about the final product. Uh, Justin is very intense. It's very uh, uh, emotional. He's very invested into what he's doing. He's a very, very generous guy. It's a brilliant man, it's a great artist. I hope I'll see more of his work and I hope we we'll see him again here yeah, soon. I'm Paul Drone. The paintings I did down there wouldn't probably wouldn't exist unless I went down there because they kind of kicked off from the, the atmosphere in there at night when it was very quiet, uh, quiet in there and it was very dark in there as well. The size of the building was, was really had one hell of a lot of potential for a lot of other things that could be done down there. As I say, it was, it was kind of it was stopped before it really got properly off the ground. The thing about the, the paintings I did, I don't really know what they're about. I probably will figure them out eventually, you know. It was work in progress. They, they needed more work and really moving out of the place was felt wrong because I wanted to stick at what I was doing, you know. It's a big disruption when you have to move everything because, like, I mean, you can't continue what you want to do. We are not here to, to uh, provide space to artists. Um, it's, that was not at all the purpose. The purpose is uh, to help a project. To, f to give facilities. That's the real purpose of the project. My name is Tina Whelan, and I was from West Cork, Scotland, but I've moved back to the city. I was there a really short time, but I thought it was absolutely brilliant. To me, it felt like, um, what's that word? Altruistic welcome to Cork for me, because having been in kind of isolated and just working on my own for years. I was painting on canvas, uh, on the front of the canvas and the back of the canvas. Uh, that way, if you put a light behind it, they were like big light boxes. If you put a light behind it, the painting changes at night time. It reminded me of New York or Belfast. Or I really, really loved the energy and I loved the fact that there was lots of different disciplines. I thought it was really exciting and how a, a play, an art space or place should, could be. And I loved that everybody had their own space and then these wonderful communal spaces. I'm uh, Catherine Coutin. I um, was born in France, but I live in Cork. I joined in uh, August, so I was there for three months. I suppose I tried different forms of art. It's always been a, a question for me. It's about meaning and harmony, and it can take lots of different forms. I think it's very important for an artist to have a, a special space for art, you know. I've tried to do it in my kitchen, and it doesn't work very well. Uh, 
I mean, um, I think creation uh, have to be uh, come with freedom. I mean, it's very important. Um, we are in, the, in peace, we are in the country, we have a lot of freedom, then we have to enjoy this freedom. Karina, she's a very charming young lady from Poland. Uh, she just popped in the place one day, she was looking for space. She showed me painting and I'm really fan. <laughs> I don't like landscape, but uh, because my test. She's really nice, she's, she's a very hard worker. She's somebody absolutely reliable. She did a lot of work in the building in terms of uh, community work, like uh, uh, helping a lot, investing herself. She's, she's brilliant. Uh, Giacomo, uh, uh, Giacomo is very special. Giacomo appears one day, he wanted to do a mural. He came in, he stayed one day, he picked up a couple of brushes. Uh, if you have the chance to see this wall, you will understand Giacomo is a monster. He's just a pure monster. This guy, is give him a pot of paint, give him a brush. You know when he's gonna start, you don't know when he's gonna stop. But he's gonna paint everything, yeah, I can be sure. <laughs> he's a monster, great. <laughs> Love him. <laughs> It was made for a community of uh, Mayfield. It was to raise people's awareness about um, a field, Tinker's Cross field, that's been um, left more or less in abandon. It's a great big field. It could be used for lots of different things, but I suppose mainly a park for people who live around. And so it was just, you know, to show people that pushing the tiger there was just, you know, that we can make things happen. And, Yeah, my name is Hermann Marbe, and I'm originally from Germany, near Mainz. I actually started to study electrician first, technical profession, and after a while I wanted to work with people more, so I uh, started nursing. And yeah, after a few years I thought it's time for something else, I started alternative medicine. And the art was more a hobby always, so I haven't actually... Uh, background of studying art or whatever, it's more self-taught or working with people or working in projects. If you go to the library, you can stand up here, and because it's, well, I have just one, I come a bit closer than I yeah. think. Okay. Hello, that's, so that's it, and then you need to wind to the next position. It was a dead bird about the size of a half a finger, but you wouldn't know mm. from the scale. And it must have died before the eyes got developed, so kind of really early as embryo. It's no eyes. Probably my saddest pictures, I guess. A few days before the event, I ran into Bertra on the on the road. And he said, well, do you have any art? And I said, I have actually loads of art. Um, yeah, done by nearly 120 people. Yeah, since three years I work with people with learning disabilities and doing art and activities with them and uh, try to help people to, not de well, to develop their style because most of the people I work with, they have already um, good skills and uh, they do interesting work and I just help with ideas and material and yeah, input, like show them how other people do artwork in galleries and museums. I like to have uh, the art of people with learning disabilities um, not labeled like outsider art, to have them actually mixed with, yeah, with I call it mainstream art. Why I don't like uh, outside art? It's like uh, saying uh, African art or Irish art or 
I don't know how we can put things like that in box. Art is art, uh, uh, creation, it's creation, whatever, wherever I come from. I mean, um, there is no difference. There is, art exists because there is a viewer. I mean, the place was already nice without artwork, uh, but uh, yeah, it definitely did win with all the different styles of art and um, from installations to paintings and sculptures. They found them very interesting and inspiring. Like it was, yeah, they asked who, who did that. And then some people have been surprised to hear, oh, yeah, this is a person with, say, Down syndrome, and oh, this is a person who uh, has a severe learning disability. I'm very happy about both exhibitions. Both were, for me, I think, really rich, fulfilling. Lots of people enjoy, apparently, that's what I saw. I saw kids running, I saw different type of people. I think when we come to a point when you have 20 or 30 artists, like it was at the end of this, this, this operation, I think we have a, a amount of energy so huge, it's so, it's so important and it's so rare also because it doesn't happen every day, uh, an event like that. For me it was, it was great because it was my first exhibition in painting and just um, get there was a big achievement for me. That was very good, um, especially because I actually hate exhibitions and I hate the usual setup of it. Like, and uh, I just liked, liked the sort of freestyle of the whole thing. So like the feedback I got from other people is that they really liked the piece and that, you know, like it was sort of good fun and it was interactive and it was this and that. Um, so I was really pleased about that, yeah. Oh, I love the bearings. <laughs> Man for the bearings. Who did that piece? It was Chris and... Chris, Chris and Abby. Abby. Yeah. Yeah, was it? And, uh, Oh, that was fantastic. It was like a, you, you reverted to a five-year-old when you start playing with these ball bearings. Yeah, the exhibition was, was fantastic, quite dark. It was, it was um, I really enjoyed it. I found a really meaty exhibition because I often go to exhibitions and I'm actually not very pleased with what I see, but there, it was really meaty and it was really alive. And, and perhaps because of the space, it was, very, it was framed within that space as well. Yeah, I loved it. And yeah. the box as well, Neil's yeah, box. Yeah, the box wow. of Neil. And also, like, I mean, there was, yeah, the quality of what was there was really, really high. And even Bertrand's, Bertrand's work, yeah. Bertrand's pieces, yeah. Like, really, there, was lots, yeah. there was a lot of stuff happening there. Fo the photographs, yeah, lots, like, I mean. The screaming I, book. Yeah, the screaming book. Yeah, wow. Yeah, like, I mean, there were, like, um, I don't know, my feeling when I was walking around there was that it was more than just an exhibition, mm. you know? It was, like, a, the product of something. Uh, that I cared for what was there more than just an exhibition. Yeah, you, know I mean? it, 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 you could feel that it was heart involved as well. You know, yeah, definitely. You could yeah. really get a feeling from it. And we were all moved by it, which, is, which is unusual. And then the performances as well that they were doing, you know, on the, on the last day. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't as such a performance yet. It was more like the kind of pre-performance stage, if you know what I mean. It was more a work in progress, and we, we just it was about kind of exploring the space and yeah, you know, the body and space and things like that. But um, yeah, we we enjoyed it anyway. We had fun, great, great fun running around in the space. So. <laughs> Thank you.
when we did uh, the performance at the end, we kept it in the darkness for the first sort of couple of runs of the of the sculpture, and people couldn't see it at first. And then when they started to see it, I think they yeah they liked it. It was good. <laughs> I created like a palace industrial nightmare scenario where there was like a petrol pump on very tall legs kind of clicking away and moving away and looking like it might just about fall over and it was being kept alive by a, by a ventilator machine that was amped up and um, dressed up as Mickey Mouse I, uh, I did a small performance about power and uh, destroyed the machine. The machine is dead, long live the machine. Uh, Tom Campbell, I'm from Scotland. I, um, yeah, it's a clay head performance, so it's, um, yeah, that was at the sort of exhibition opening. Um, it's basically putting clay on my head and then making masks with it. That's pretty much what the performance is. And it was nice because it was, it was dark candlelight, which I think is a nice way of working. Um, interesting to see that you don't actually need loads of money or loads of specialists that if you if you really want to do something and yeah, you can if you work together and improvise you know, it's quite amazing what, what people can do in a very short time if, if the group that was in the Reliance company can in some way remain connected so that as a group you know it could grow and include more people because this is the way in some countries in the world they achieve this permanently, a place like this where arts and disciplines mix and, you know, the government helps and, you know, hopefully we will be able to do it here as well. I hope we have another building. I've got a, a couple of projects in sight. I don't know if, if it will be possible. But if it's not today or tomorrow, it'll be after tomorrow, I'm sure. So yeah, if the space was there, it would make our life so much easier. If the space like that had longer time, I think people would be doing more stuff and it could, every space would, uh, of the building would be used more efficiently, maybe. I'd definitely be interested, yeah, and I think on the back of what's just happened, I think, I think it's really promising, the, the sort of, the future is promising. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got every chance of finding another space, because like Cork was really well represented, there were so many different people, different things going on in there. I think, yeah, I think it's a really good project for Cork. I mean, this world would be too easy if we could say, OK, uh, uh, I'll give you 10 grand or I'll give you in ha a house or I'll give you a car and then now you're going to succeed and everything's going to be fine. No, it's impossible. This world doesn't exist. OK, it's, uh, it's up to us. It's up to us. I mean, uh, uh, we just have to pull up the sleeves and, and do the job. And if we do what we have to do and if we do what we think we should do and with, with good purpose, I mean, yeah, of course, we're going to win. I'd love to say a, a big thanks for Canon Properties, uh, a big thanks for Wano Callahan, and big thanks, of course, uh, Connor Kelly. I learned to respect these people, they're really nice. And when they say something, they hold to it, and this is the most important thing. Thank you very much.